Okay, so we're going to be talking about DNS and encryption and hopefully encrypted DNS. Before we get into that, I want to start off and let our panelists introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Xavier Ash. Um, I've been uh, a hacker since the late 80s. I've been in the security in industry since the early 90s um, and uh, most of my career as a consultant. And I'm currently running a incident response team for a local financial institution. I'm Randall Schwartz. Uh, you may remember me for having written a bunch of books about Perl in the mid-90s that helped create the interactive web. And I also have this wonderful little podcast called Floss Weekly. I've uh, been doing that for 11 years. Who, who's a subscriber to Floss Weekly? Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. And, uh, and now I'm also a, uh, a Google developer expert on the Flutter and Dart programming languages. So I'm expanding myself one more time. And I am Erica Pornoy. I am a technologist at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. We are a nonprofit defending civil liberties in the digital world. I work on our net neutrality project. I work on stopping crypto backdoors. And in the rest of my time, I work on developing CertBot, which is a tool to get certificates for your website to turn on HTTPS using Let's Encrypt, the free certificate authority. But we're not talking about any of that today. Today we are talking about DNS. Um, when we will get to what encrypted DNS means, but first, show of hands, who is uh, who know who's heard the word DNS before? Wow. Okay. Who uh, knows what it means and what it is and what it does? Okay. Who would be able to explain DNS to their sibling? <laughs> okay. 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 Who has explained it to their siblings? <laughs> there we go. Ah, yeah. That's exactly. it's a larger show of hands than the previous one. Okay. So I saw <laughs> about like ten percent awesome. of the room who uh, did not raise their hand, so to get everybody on the same page super quickly, when you want to go to a website on your computer, uh, like Randall just did, you type in the domain in the, cert in the URL bar, and when you type that domain in, it goes off to a service, and it translates this service into a bunch of numbers, and then your computer actually goes to a server located at those particular numbers. The service that does this translation, the one that translates from the domain name to the numbers, kind of like a telephone book, for your internet is called DNS. Um, and so, okay, so, but you might not have known that it does all these things when it goes to the site in the first place. It doesn't just go directly to this particular domain name. It doesn't go to, what are we on here? Uh, Cloudflare.com. Yep. It needs to be translated into these numbers. And so, when you eventually go to the site located at the place where the numbers are, that might be encrypted using something called HTTPS, TLS, or SSL, depending what year it is. Mm -hmm. um, and you could tell it's encrypted because it'll often have a green lock icon in the URL bar. But before it does this, before it actually tries to fetch the web page for you, it needs to go and do this translation. And the thing about doing that translation is that it's kind of hard to have that service be encrypted. There's been a whole bunch of tries over the years, and there's things that you can do personally. Uh, but nowadays, pretty recently actually, uh, we're just starting to do some experiments with ways to make that step of the process encrypted as well. And just in case, encrypted means that other people can't see it. Very uh, short version there. So um, I think that's about going to get us on the same page here. Um, and yeah. Uh, well, and we so. Um, to, to kind of extend that, I love this little analogy that uh, you know when you're especially trying to explain this to um, your uh, you know sibling, is um, you know if you give somebody your telephone uh, for them to make a phone call, uh, they they can take your phone, they dial the number, and they step out for privacy, and they go and talk on their phone. They come back, and they give you your phone back, and so and in that case, you know the phone conversation itself was encrypted. You know, they stepped out; you couldn't hear them. Uh, however, you can look back at your phone and see the phone number that you called. And so that's the kind of situation we're in here is that the DNS uh, lookup is, is making that, you know, it's like it's telling somebody what website you went to. And that doesn't, like I said, it doesn't it encrypt the actual communication between the website and you, but you've got that telltale sign that you at least went to that website. And, and so that's one of the reasons that you would want to encrypt your DNS. Except it's not just in your browser, it's actually all the way at the other end as well. So somebody can see that you went to Google.com or whatever, or, or other sites, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so the problem is that you really want to be able to say, I want to go look up these IP addresses without having to be 
visible to the internet? Uh, okay, so I was hoping we could take a step back and instead of getting into the nitty gritty of the technical details, talk about who we're talking about here. Uh, so why, like, why am I worried about this? Who is seeing this information? Like, is it someone like uh, Randall? Actually, I was hoping you can maybe tell everybody like what the parties are along the way. Who is it that we want to protect from seeing this information in the first place? So from the beginning, as you try to look up an address, as you try to look up a name, you're going to one of, I think it's 13 root servers, and they will all have access to your information. They will know that you're looking up this domain name, google.com, whatever, right? But also, your ISP can see that you're making this request. So people can track that. People can see that nearby. And in fact, if we're on, we're on Wi-Fi here, people can see every request you're making on Wi-Fi here. So people know you're going to these websites. And that's a little scary sometimes. It's like, why do people care what I'm seeing? But sometimes you care that people care. Uh, so you've done some, like, uh, uh, not forensics work but necessarily, but like web security work and doing like, pen testing sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. How easy would it be for you to, if someone in this room right now, uh, on, let's assume this is an open Wi-Fi network, you had a computer out, uh, how easy would it be for you to see what their DNS requests that they were making were? Yeah, everything, uh, all Should DNS requests. Should I show this? Should I show it? <laughs> <laughs> so all DNS requests are in the clear, and, yes. and uh, it, it yes. uses a particular protocol called UDP, which is super simple, too. It just sends out a packet, and, and it's, it's, it's all there for you to pick up and read. Right. And in Wi-Fi world, all, you know, it's all in the air, and so all I, all I have to do is you know, do a little bit of trickery to the, to, uh, to set it up, but then it can start capturing every single DNS request you make. Sounds like we have questions already. You got to take the box, though. You have to have the box because it's being recorded. So please take the box. Yeah, I hear it. Don't drop the box. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would putting the number in directly cut off any of that mm -hmm. process? Uh, yeah, that would cut out the DNS the part DNS of it. Up, yeah. um, and then you're at that point worried about fetching the web page itself. So that's another hop in the process. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the DNS step, but then at this point, uh, depending uh, what protocol you're using, encrypted SNI isn't really a thing. Um, mm, okay, I'm actually not going to go into all the details <laughs> of that. Essentially, if you put the number directly into the box, they'll be able to see what number you're going to, and then they could do a reverse DNS lookup. Uh, but they won't be able to see the domain name itself. Yeah, and, and it's not so much capturing it live. Like even even with if I if if we had encrypted DNS, if I'm here in the same room, I can see the traffic you're going to and see which websites you're going to. But that that the the content is encrypted in in general. And so if I'm just looking at your web browsing here. Uh, the reason that we worry about it is not so much you know local people on your local network sniffing it, but the ISP and lots of servers in in between. So for a, if I do a uh, you know uh, uh, www.dragoncon.com, it you know like you said it goes out to the root servers first. The root servers then say here are my other servers uh, that knows well, about. Well, it doesn't actually go to the root servers, right? If you're uh, well, if if, if you're it, going to the DNS. I guess yeah, it goes. It if goes you go to your, your ISP's, ISP's DNS. DNS it, and then that ISP DNS, if it doesn't know dot, dot com just yet. It, right, it, but yeah. when it goes to the root server, at that point, they don't know the request came from you from in you. the first place unless they're doing larger scale right. network analysis. Right, right, right. But, uh, but knowing that those sites, it, it, so going to particular sites, knowing that they're being accessed by that you know, ISP can help drill down. And so if you're looking, you know, if you're talking about going to you know sites that that are uh, very interesting to go to from uh, um, you know if the government wanted to track where you know the people that were going to particular websites and and it wasn't a website like google.com that everybody's going to that kind of, that leaves those little um, you know breadcrumbs out that says somebody in this ISP went oh, to Oh, we're talking uh, about ISPs and I realize we super have not defined that term. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, when I say ISP, I mean Comcast and only Comcast. <laughs> Actually, Lynx, Linksys is my favorite ISP. <laughs> Lynx is always my favorite ISP. That's, that's, that's a joke. Um, other half of the room. Um, I mentioned that 
tragically because unfortunately for me Comcast is my only choice of ISP because in this country we have the sort of system where there's only one uh, internet service provider is what it stands for available for any particular person you might have something else like Verizon uh, I don't even know what other people I, I still Charter. dial up to Mindspring so uh, <laughs> yeah. AT&T great okay so there's all these things and this is the the person that you buy your internet from is your ISP so when I go and I'm trying to browse other people are using the same ISP that I'm using, and the DNS server tends to be local to the ISP. It doesn't have to be, though. So I can choose who I want to hide my information with. You were mentioning OpenDNS before, right? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, so um, OpenDNS is, is um, a, you know, kind of the first start at trying to say, you don't have to use your, D your ISP's DNS. Here's this other open D D D DNS servers. You can go and change the default settings on your router or your or machine, and you can go use another uh, another DNS. And and we're going to give you some extra features. We're going to block some stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, I use it for my home to to, to block uh, sites that my kids you know shouldn't go to. Instead of them trying to uninstall proxy software off their PC, I'm blocking at the DNS, meaning that if they try to go to Playboy.com, it just doesn't resolve. They get a nice you know open DNS error message saying, "Sorry, you can't go there." So open DNS is uh, now uh, was recently last couple of years was uh, purchased by Cisco, um, and so. The openness is, is up to debate, but nonetheless, uh, it, it kind of they started this uh, idea of hey, uh, we can run this third-party DNS and and provide security services, uh, blocking you know really bad sites and uh, and provide that. And so other um, other companies have jumped uh, jumped on that ship along with uh, 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 Cloud Cloudflare, yes, that's what I'd say, that's and a couple this. of others, um, and providing a alternative. Uh, DNS. So that that's not we're not yet to encrypted, right? This is now just I got another DNS, and so now you're not giving you. Know, uh, I specifically do not want Comcast to know what I'm doing. Exactly. Uh, so I mean, they could still see the rest of the traffic going by, but then I could use a VPN for actually connecting to the sites. I could use Tor, and this is just protecting that final step that wouldn't have been able to be protected from. So if I really don't want Comcast to know what I'm doing because they are gouging me for money more and more every year. I just had a call with them last week where they tried to increase my price again, so I'm a little, that's where all this salt is coming from. Anyway, <laughs> so I specifically do not want Comcast to know that I'm trying to visit Sonic's website and try to use them as, a, as an ISP instead. And so I can use Cloudflare's DNS server, I can use OpenDNS, Google has a DNS server. I can change the DNS server in my browser on my machine to go to a different one, and then Comcast won't see the DNS step of things. And then when we go to the site itself, it will be protected at other levels using different technologies. So how many people here uh, use a VPN service? Right, so we're going to give the majority. I, I assume that when it's all the, the nice crowd here, that this is a lot of, you know, coming out of, hey, you know, I run a VPN, but then a lot of VPN services talk about encrypted DNS or protected DNS and things like that. So I, let's just uh, see what our audience is, where, where we're at. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Google's got public DNS. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I've used Google's as as, as well. Um, yeah, until Cloudflare came along, this is my primary one right here. Okay, but yeah, so we've been talking about this Cloudflare one, and this is the thing that all the, you know, encryption DNS nerds over here who work on certificate authorities uh, have been excited about recently because. Uh, so what Cloudflare is doing differently is they're using a protocol called DNS over HTTPS. Oh, there's also DNS over TLS. It's slightly different. Whatever. Not going to go into those details. But essentially, <laughs> what it does is it means that when you set it to this particular 1.1.1.1 and you're using Firefox and you turn it on, and maybe hopefully it'll eventually be on by default, it'll automatically use the Cloudflare DNS in a way that encrypts it so that it's encrypted from you to Cloudflare, and nobody else along the way can see the contents of those DNS queries. So that means my ISP won't be able to see the DNS queries that I'm doing, because it'll be encrypted along the way. Uh, we have a question in the front, it sounds like, about this? Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, do you want to wait, wait for the mic? Wait for the, wait for the box. Wait for the box. Come this way. You're going to feed back on this feed. Wait for the box. OK, sorry if this wait, is like. Wait, wait, is it? Yes, I think it's on. Okay. There you go. Sorry if this is like derailing the, the uh, conversation because I, I don't mean that at all.
but in the um, uh, you know when you use a VPN that sort of thing but then visit sites that need cookies and stuff to operate or the site doesn't operate um, obviously they're gaining information from you um, as far yes. as I know um, your um, on it right now. It's the social security number of your um, electronic devices. The IME. Mac I. Yes. yes. Um, that they'll also grab those and sell those for advertising and stuff like that too. Um, again, not to derail, but how does that influence the whole uh, uh, conversation? So it's all part of the same ecosystem here. Uh, essentially, this is what it really comes down to is threat modeling. So when you're using a VPN, the question is, who are you trying to protect against? The site that you're going to at the endpoint is still going to get the information that you're sending to it, and that's when you have to worry about cookies. That's when you have to worry about things that they're putting directly in your browser. There's different protections against those sort of things. When you're talking about using encrypted DNS, when you're talking about using Tor, talking about using a VPN, what you're trying to protect is everyone else out there other than the site you're going to. So that means that you don't want your ISP to see it. It means that you don't want the people who have stuck splitters into the backbone of the internet and are catching all internet traffic that goes by to see it. It means when you're on the Wi-Fi, you don't have to worry about other people on the same Wi-Fi network as you. If you're home and you have perhaps other people in your family that you don't want seeing everything that you're doing, they won't be able to see any of those things when you use a VPN. But you're totally right that there's tons of tracking stuff that is going on at the level of the site that you're visiting. Uh, but from a network perspective, that's when you would want to use these other things. Yeah, that is a whole separate other topic that we can probably yes. do another multiple panels on. And if you didn't see it, I was actually just fixing my laptop so that it's actually using 1111 right now. So, yes. Great. So Great. For the rest of the evening, <laughs> I will be doing that. Okay. How are we on time? Time check. Um, Okay, so. Um, question? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I've got a whole Where's bunch of more topics on, the on this topic, so if you guys have questions, feel free to jump in. Otherwise, we will get into all nitty gritty technical parts. Sure. We can Installing my own DNS servers, is that a good alternative? I mean, by changing the D DNS address, it, it's just like changing the person who is receiving information. Yeah, so the question is who do you like seeing it less? Uh, just Cloudflare versus your ISP and everybody else who might be between you and the DNS server in your ISP. If I buy, for example, a digital ocean instance and I install Bind9 or some other DNS service, do you think that's still a good alternative? I mean, uh, are you running it on your local machine? It could be. I mean, that's a pretty good, that is, if you are at the place where you're comfortable running bind on your local machine and you have the hard drive space and you're not and you're fine with the caching times and things like that and you enjoy setting up your own servers, that's great because it doesn't need to be encrypted over the link because it's just going within your own machine. Okay. But your your local resolution, your local server is still going to go out through the connection, the TCP connection, UDP connection, sorry, UDP, yeah. UDP connection to go to all these other servers. So mm -hmm. your ISP will still see what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. So what you really want to do is do something like uh, uh, you know, SSL with 1111, that kind of thing. Okay. Because it aggregates it at the ISP. So if you got a whole bunch of other people yeah. to use the server on your machine, the DNS server on your machine, uh, then they would be using the same one. Because Okay, so actually, okay. So there's actually two types of DNS servers. There's possibly more types of DNS servers if you want to be really pedantic about it. But there's two main types of DNS servers. There's authoritative DNS servers, which hold the actual records of what it is. And then there's recursive or resolving DNS servers, which go and ask other DNS servers for the information. And so unless you have the authoritative DNS server itself, the DNS servers are all talking to each other. And so at some point along there, it's going to have to go ask a different DNS server. And the question then just becomes, how many other people are asking that DNS server for this information, and who can see the queries along the way to that DNS server? Cool. Um, so, oh. Well, and, and, and as well, if you have malware on your machine, which, you know, a lot of us do and don't know it, <laughs> uh, you know, being able to capture that, because again, if, if, if it's not encrypted, 
then capture it on the wire. That malware can also, you know, collect that information. Adware, malware, you know, that that, uh, you know, uh, installed toolbar, uh, things like that. So, so being able to do encrypted DNS, awesome, but it's not completely rolled out yet in Firefox, and you have to be using Firefox. What if you want to use Chromium or some other type of browser? You've built your own custom browser. So what if you do want to be using encrypted DNS right now? Uh, we, you were mentioning before, I was hoping you could tell us about some of the options if I want to go turn it on right now. Yeah, so, so encrypted DNS right now, is the, main, the first option here, Cloudflare, 1111, Firefox. Extra setting, you'll have to, to set that up. All right, fairly straightforward, but you know, if you can't really run Firefox, or you have other, uh, other you, you know, want to look at other options. Um, OpenDNS has, has released a, uh, a, a software called uh, DNS Crypt, and what it is is a uh, basically a little DNS proxy uh, that runs on your local machine, um, and um, y then you will change your DNS server to 127.0.0.1, and and query your local machine, and then it creates an encrypted tunnel out to OpenDNS, and and provides it that way. So that is another option. Um, I've read through the tutorials. It's you know it is a, you know it's probably a couple more steps than the Cloudflare, uh, but again another uh, option. Um, and that um, um, there are a couple. And if you're very technical, uh, and you know you run your own WRT router, uh, there are a couple of, of plugins for the Open WRT router that allow you to do this at your home router. Uh, if you want to use, uh, it, 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 there's a because uh, there's a Linux version of of Open uh, of DNS Crypt from Open DNS that allowed you to plug that into WRT. So th those are the other you know options right now for 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 doing is either Cloudflare or using the uh, Open DNS or there's a whole lot of the VPN providers that uh, you know also do something similar. And so looking at your uh, your uh, VPN setup. You know, go to see what your DNS settings are after you install your VPN. Is it using the v is it using uh, the uh, uh, v your VPN services uh, DNS? Uh, is that uh, or is it going to point back toward you know itself and do a local loopback like uh, like I just described? And so there's there's a couple of uh, methods there and and and. That again can go down a rabbit hole on what the, the be best ways that, that VPN ad adapters are doing it, but that that's kind of like a third option is, is using what what's provided by your VPN. Okay, so I was hoping we'd actually change the discussion a bit to what is seems to me to be the elephant in the room here, which is that the, which is the question of centralization. So uh, it's great that Cloudflare is putting up this DNS, but I mean Cloudflare already sees has enough of an eye into the internet, do they really need more of an eye into what everybody is doing at any given time? Not necessarily. The one great thing about having each ISP, well, one of the great things about having each ISP have its own DNS server is that no single ISP knows what every single person is doing with their DNS queries. And so if every single person automatically has their DNS server set to a single server, that means that that server is getting a really central viewpoint into what everybody's doing. When Firefox agreed to set the Cloudflare thing as their DNS, they made Cloudflare enter into a really good privacy policy, uh, which is very preserving. Cloudflare promises not to keep your data, um, but other people might pop up ones, like uh, Google DNS might turn this on, Open DNS might turn this on, and they won't necessarily be beholden to the same constraints. So it enters this question of, uh, what can we do about this problem here? And in my personal opinion, I think the correct answer in the end is to have every ISP and every DNS server and bind all use this encrypted DNS protocol by default. Um, and that's the way I see it. But I think this is still, in my opinion, an open question. And especially if people in the audience have opinions about this, I, th I would love to hear, uh, especially if anyone runs their own DNS server, how do you feel about turning on encrypted DNS yourself for any services that you run? Yeah, we've got uh, one behind. Um, I think, uh, have it, oh. I think having having uh, encrypted DNS on by default on your browser is a great thing. Um, doesn't just stop people from snooping, but it can stop man in the middle attacks. Um, I mean, like right now, somebody could capture your data in your, your DNS request in the middle, change it, and change it to a different website that it reports to, coming back. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, using encrypted DNS if you can. Um, it would fix that issue as well. That is a great point. Man in the middle attack uh, is an attack where you jump onto a connection and you change the contents as they're going. By the way, essentially, if you two are trying to talk to each other and you're telling me a secret, I'm telling him a secret, I can just change the secret in the middle if they don't encrypt it to each other along the way. I see another question popping up over here. Yeah, or a comment or a statement, whatever. Wait for the box. There we go. So, I mean, this, this sounds great that you have this new protocol, but once you spread it beyond you know, Cloudflare and a couple of others, it'll have to be open. Now all of a sudden I'll have to have trusted and untrusted DNS, so I could still do a man in the middle if I sign my fake DNS server. Is Are there uh, methods being put in place to protect against that? Are you talking about like downgrade attacks? No, so um, I'm man in the middle, right? Yeah. So DNS is trivial now. So now if I got this HTTPS answer, could I just have my fake DNS server be a signed DNS site? and give the answer back to them? Are they validating? Um, now, right now, it's probably only one, but if you make this an open standard, and there's hundreds of them, how will the browser trust it? Are you gonna have a list of trusted DNS servers on the internet? So, so the, the solution to that is, is another DNS security thing that's not encrypted DNS. Uh, so uh, it's commonly referred to as DNSSEC. All right. Oh, and that's, ooh, yeah, uh, we, and that's no, where we could. Do, no, we could do, but there's, there's just, just it's just, just we don't that's want nothing. Our that's something else. <laughs> it's a different. It's a different problem. To, uh, so the way this problem is solved is the same way it's solved with HTTPS. Essentially, the DNS server needs to get a certificate. So the same way that a website can get a certificate, the DNS server gets a certificate and uses that. So you know you're talking to the particular DNS server that you were trying to talk to. Totally agree. I just. Is this being addressed in this? I mean, DNSSEC isn't super popular. Oh, this isn't DNSSEC. This is DNS over HTTPS, no, 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 no. which is a different protocol. I oh, know. I was just saying it, it kind of goes in conjunction with it, but I'll stop talking about it now. Oh, you're trying. You're oh, you're <laughs> trying to turn this into a DNSSEC conversation. Right. Oh no, that is not what this is at all. It's you don't have a list of. That, that's what makes this better. Okay, for those of you who came to this room because you wanted to talk about DNSSEC, the reason this is better than DNSSEC is because you do not have a trusted list of servers. Any DNS server can be a DNS server and you know to trust it because it has a certificate just in the same way that regular servers have regular old certificates and you don't need a trusted list of every server on the internet. Okay, we can take one more question about DNSSEC and then we are not talking about DNSSEC. <laughs> <laughs> That took me in a completely different way because you have DNS authorities. I mean, if, if, I'm, the, if I'm the authority DNS for mm -hmm. a particular location, somebody else can't just change it and take it away from me and say they're a DNS for that location because mine's registered. My IP address um, and my DNS name are registered, and that's what gives me the They're authority. registered at the authoritative server? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But you still have interceptions mm -hmm. in the traffic that goes right, to your the, server. Right, but the question was about yeah. what would prevent me from just bringing up my own DNS server and calling the authoritative for somebody else, you can't do that. The DNS servers can you still can. lie just as much as they can now. That doesn't, this isn't covered by right. that at so, all. So my question though is about, so you want to encrypt the fact that Comcast, so they don't know where I'm going. Yes. But when I make my request to go there, they know where I'm going because they have the IP address I'm trying to go to. So After you've gotten the IP address? Yeah. Uh, not if you're using a VPN as well. Or using if I'm Tor using well. a VPN, then they don't know to begin with because the VPN server's in a different location, not even on Comcast. Many for, VPNs for do you. not, uh, they, they, they leak the DNS ent entry. That's, that's the problem is uh, all VPNs are not created equal, especially on, on mobile devices. And, and uh, you, you'll, you'll, you can easily see that that's, I, I, I've closed a lot of cases on DNS entries alone because the VPN that they chose. Yes, yeah, some, right. some VPNs actually leak the DNS lookups, so you have to be careful about that. Right, but if I wanted to prevent Comcast from knowing where I'm going, then I use a VPN service that will protect that, and then the problem's gone. So that's another that's way of doing what, it, what, what uh, this, but not all, yeah. yeah. And, and that's if an the VPN additional... didn't leak it in the first place, we wouldn't need to be having this conversation. Right. Cool. And, and VPNs are, are, are paid services, and you've got to trust them. So again, that you know, layers of trust and all of that. So it's another way of yes, of, of, of solving this problem, but that you know, that's not necessarily financially feasible for everyone. And that you know, the idea here is we are extend. This is you know, this is an RFC. This is a you know, a, a way of fixing 
a very basic protocol built 30, 40 years ago, and uh, and and this is the, you know, the effort that we're trying to put forward is to say, you know, we can fix the protocol without you know needing to require you to pay, you know, an, uh, for a VPN service. Okay, so who here is in an IETF working group? Show of hands. I am so sorry for all of you, mm -hmm. um, uh, but okay, let's talk about some of, okay, IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, is the one that decides what's going on with all the protocols that make up the internet. So we, there's been a bit, okay, one of the reasons that you want encrypted DNS is because there's been a, a deadlock, there's been a deadlock in IETF politics between encrypted DNS and encrypted SNI, server name indication. It essentially means that when I'm going to a website, I'm going to a particular server located at a particular IP address, but it doesn't necessarily need to know the domain name, and you can encrypt the domain name until you get to the server. So a single server can be hosting multiple domains on it. So if, assuming we're not using a VPN now, if we want encrypted SNI, the argument goes, well, why bother doing that? Because the domain name is just going to get leaked when you go to the DNS server. And why bother doing DNS? Because assuming you're not using a VPN, or you're using a, uh, yeah, assuming you're not using a VPN, why bother encrypting the DNS? because the, SN, the server name is just going to get leaked when you're making the HTTPS connection in the first place. So another great thing that encrypted DNS does is it breaks this deadlock and means that we can have both of them be encrypted. Because once you have encrypted DNS, you might as well encrypt the SNI, because then you get this nice thing where if I'm running an Nginx server or an Apache server and I have hundreds of domain names on my site, someone can come to my site and a network observer won't be able to see which address I was they were going to because the name will be encrypted. Um, so that's another benefit there, is even if you're not using a VPN. Okay, I think I saw a question back over there, right behind. Is that still a question? A comment, statement, discussion? Drop the box. Next. Um, for a home consumer that's going out and wanting <coughs> to protect themselves, put DNS, put a VPN, put all these things in, to add these levels of going, okay, uh, maybe a few people have my stuff. Uh, that all begins on a networking router level, and it's hard to point someone at Best Buy, which is the only place you're going to buy it, because it's either that or Amazon, and say, you need to protect these things, but you can't really truly explain why they need protection without going over their heads. Do you recommend just grabbing something and trying to put your manual settings and go through these tutorials or hit it with a different firmware, get something like WDRT and uh, you know PFSense and that kind of thing in order to use plugins in order for it to work a little bit easier. So what would you recommend for someone that just is getting into the game and wanting to do that? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 if, if you can, you know, fix it on the router level, and they don't have to support it on the on their endpoint. Then you know you, you you fix it for them, right? And as long as it doesn't require a lot of maintenance and update, you can go and set your parents up to you know that now they're they're set up on the router and they won't know any better. Then then that's obviously the better answer there. Uh, you know uh, these other th settings, you know uh, both with Cloudflare or with DNSSEC. I mean uh, uh, a DNS script is. Um, is, is that you know there's stuff on the endpoint and if they they mess that up, they go use Chrome instead of IE or whatever. You know that that's that's where you can you can um, have support problems there. So yes, obviously fixing on the router is uh, easier. Uh, you know, I'm in more I'm more into endpoint security. Honestly, I think that uh, doing it in the router, like it's just it's not as good because if you have someone inside the network, you have to worry about insider threats. Like it's but so there's, much. There's better, so many you know? iOS devices like your Fires and your Echoes and your Things mm. and your te wiretaps and your everything that it's hard to put these locks on everybody. Yeah. Getting your kid to hand you the iPad so you can put VPN, you know, all these things, you can't really always So what we it. want is we want the people who develop the devices to put it in by default. Right. And they won't do that. Well, no, people are starting to do that, you know? They, that's what even, it's starting. It's going slowly, but it's starting. Change the DNS settings is, you know, something. I mean, uh, that was a way we used to hack the, the Xbox games, is you would change, you know, get the Xbox to, to go to a different DNS, and then you could, you know, you know, get on, you know, uh, get stuff, you know, slid into the network connection. And so that that's that's the reason that they don't want to, to you know, allow those devices to, to, to go outside that. Even um, Chrome, if you if, if DNS is, is is not working on your machine, Chrome will say, hey, I'm just going to go check out 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. 
because I tried to do a DNS lookup and it didn't work. But I know Google's there, so I'm just going to go out and, and do. You know, it, it's so annoying if you set up a block. You say I am I only am using Open DNS. I don't want my kids changing my DNS server so that they go watch you know Playboy.com. So you know I'm going to block it, and then I start seeing 8.8 .8, you know, you know outreaches to 8.8. .8. So you know, it that that kind of stuff happens all the time, and so you know in, until we sit there and insist that hey guys. We want to be able to have this control. We want to be able to have uh, and, and you know and make those requests of our different manufacturers. You know that's that's where, you know, this kind of you know motion gets happening is, is, is that people want this and demand it from the manufacturers. So let's 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 get there and tell them what we want. Um, I've seen this question right up here and oh, it was from before. Uh, oh, sorry, where were we? Right up here, yeah, blue shirt. There you go. So is there what is there pushback? on implementing this, getting this, like, I mean, because you talked about, you know, you're trying to get it in devices, but I mean, considering is like a Comcast or ISPs, are they pushing back saying, you know, we don't want this or anything like that? You know, I think the only pushback I've seen isn't so much from a we don't want this perspective, more of a, oh, it's a new technology that we haven't quite figured it out, or I just don't want to put in the effort to implement it. I actually personally haven't seen anyone say, this is a bad idea, we don't want it for this particular technology. But if someone else has seen that, I am happy to be corrected. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm actually going to ask uh, you all, and if you don't know, hopefully someone in this room will, because I am too young to know the answer to this one, which is why, I mean, I have a guess. Okay, so my question is, why did ISPs start having DNS in the first place? Like, why wasn't it just some people, like, people running DNS servers anywhere? Like, why in the ISPs? That's kind of weird. Um, I guess it's because it's right there, and it's easy, and you can all just set it up, DHCP, right there. But um, I think I saw the first hand right up here at the front. Who wants to tell me why you learned things that when you were alive when I wasn't? Wait, wait, oh, oh, wait, Yeah, wait. we want the box. Tell the people at the back of the room, too, using this magic box. Wait for the box. Always wait for the box. Um, I mean, my guess would be that in the early days, I mean, everything was kind of bulletin boards, and you had to know the number to be able to get onto the site, and it w was cumbersome. Is that, is that what you're asking, why it was changed to um, a naming system instead mm. of a number? No, why is it the ISPs system? that ended up running the DNS servers? Uh, you can toss ah, it to whichever yeah. hand you want to toss it to. It's first hop. It's first hop. That's the thing. Yeah, it's you're right there. It's, it's you're right there. Yeah. Was the internet that slow yeah. back then? Well, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I'm out of the feedback zone. You don't have uh, to walk up here. You can actually just speak into the no, microphone. I was like five. Back, Where uh, the speaker? Feedback zone. Oh, oh, feedback. Sorry. Um, yeah, ISP. Of, uh, when everybody started getting on the internet, there weren't that many root servers, and everybody was pounding it, uh, pounding on the root servers, going for .com, and then then on down. Uh, there was also an opportunity for the. Jeez. Me, me, me. There was also an opportunity for the. Jeez, I can't get if, if, if you look at it ugly, that helps. <laughs> get, get, it, get it closer to your mouth. That way they can turn better. Down. That way they can turn down. Yeah, dial, dial down again. Sorry, my, my voice is shot. Uh, there was an opportunity to, uh, to monetize too. So if I could look at who my customers were and where they were going, I can sell that information to advertisers. Uh, so I've got a. a captured audience if I have a Verizon or a Comcast or something. Were they actually doing that though in like oh, yeah, the 80s? Like back in the 80s. No, I know uh, today oh, 80s, obviously uh, sure but in, you know. Well, I think they the were doing that days. back in the 80s. It was more of a distributed thing because not right. many. But not, when you first started server. doing it before and, they yeah, realized so they can sell it. it well, it's, 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 it's UDP and UDP is you know you, it's, it, you can drop that traffic and so with any UDP traffic you want as close to the endpoint as possible. And it so really was because the internet was that unreliable. Well, UDP is like that in, in general. You, you don't want to put UDP services that many hops away. Yep. Um, I think I see someone back there has something to say, too. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I think it was probably just started as a convenience, but I had a different question. <laughs> Shoot. Um, I was actually really hoping that somebody in this room, like, had started one of those ISPs. Oh, oh, yeah. I used to work for Charter Communications. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's, it's a combination of all of those. Um, it's, it's, for the home users, it's convenience because you can just use DHCP and uh, get, an, get, get a DNS server that way. 
they can just connect. I mean, and also there is, yes, selling all of the, the uh, what was it, uh, the lookups, so to see what people are doing and sell that just for sales uh, things. And uh, also, uh, but yeah, those are the two main things. That originally, and I think originally it was to uh, conserve bandwidth because you have one uh, DNS server that's doing the lookup and then it's just distributing it to all of your uh, users that are connecting. So, a little bit of all of those that have already been mentioned. Cool. Okay, cool. I think that's enough on that topic. It looks like we had a separate question uh, right next to over there. <laughs> uh, so, if, if, uh, you, if you already have something like a pie hole running, uh, is there a convenient way to get this running on that system? If you already have what? If you already have something like a pie hole running on your system, is there a convenient way to set this up? I, it, I think this person over here in the audience is excited about talking about doing this. Good job. Uh, I, can, I can answer that question. <laughs> yes. You can put it on the same pie uh, with DNS script. It's really, it'll probably take you an hour to do. It's a very easy setup. So. There's if you Google there if you Google DNS crypt on Pihole, there's I think like the third thing that's gonna show up for you on Google is like a Reddit link with a full walkthrough of how to do it. It's not Reddit. Uh, no, it's not it's not a button. No, it takes some setup, but not much. Great. Okay, I saw a bunch of other hands before. Um, there we go, there's there's another one. Cool. I don't know how you feel about using name brands, but um, maybe you could uh, give the name brands anyway, realizing that in two weeks I think I'll, I'll be different, but what VPNs are in the thumbs up category for the DNS leaking with them? Uh, VPNs are uh, the really sucky ones that are just selling all your information to communist Russia. I mean, for example. Um, <laughs> I don't have an answer to this question because I actively try not to use VPNs because I work on HTTPS professionally and I want HTTPS to be so good and TLS 1.0 Four, I guess now. <laughs> that was a joke because TLS 1.3 just came out and it doesn't have encrypted SNI, but I hope that it will be in TLS 1.4 when it comes out in a decade. Um, because I care about making the HTTPS ecosystem good, I don't use a VPN because I want to do that, but if you two have questions about which VPN you like, go ahead. I, I, I haven't got to one to, to trust one yet, so I set up my own server and I VPN to my own. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's my level apparently. Maybe in the back of there we have an opinion? <laughs> um, I, I had that same question a while back too. I discovered a link on Reddit for a site called that one privacy site dot net and um, it had a full breakdown on all the big uh, VPNs out there like literally the three dozen VPNs it was comparing. And what was that site? Can you say that again? Uh, that one privacy site uh, dot net and um, it's really good. He, had, he put together a spreadsheet, and this is just like a dude that wanted to help people with this question. He put together a spreadsheet um, with comparisons showing, well, this is in a 14 eyes country, or this is based out of this country that has like you know good privacy laws. And um, the ones I found that really looked good, the only one that I really liked was Moldad, I think. And uh, they, they only accept Bitcoin. They only deal personally with the, uh, the hosting data centers that host their VPN. Um, anyway, uh, it, it's a bunch of links you have to go through there, but it's worth looking at. I, I was, now that we th is, you know, I was talking about it, uh, Proton, uh, you know, you use the oh, Proton yeah, yeah. Mail. I do. They do now have a, a VPN service as ah, well, yeah. and uh, it, it's, it's all based in, in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those that, that, that their threat model, that fits their... their uh, Level of paranoia than than uh, you know, Proton is a, a fairly trusted site. So, yeah. I mean, the probably best thing to do if you're able is to set up your own on your own cloud service and just use like Streisand or something like that, and then you know what it's actually running and you know what software it's running because any other VPN service, you don't know what they're doing. Maybe they rolled their own and like it has bad crypto or something, right? Um, but assuming that not everybody wants to do that, that's when you uh, can use this site here. Hmm? Streisand, a uh, software that does a whole bunch of other things too, but one of the things it can do is set up a VPN for you. Like Barbara, Barbara, but just the last name, Streisand. Um, but that's that's like you set it up yourself. Like you either set you set up your own physical server or you get 
like some cloud server and you install it and have to deal with it and do your own software updates. So, and I, I could very easily derail right now into a whole discussion on whether or not it's better to have other people do your tech ops for you or for you to do it yourself and have to worry about doing your updates for your own server and the relative privacy trade-offs, but I think we will stop this here. Um, I wonder if this site was made by the people who are all green on this list? I don't know. Uh, nobody's all green, so. No, nobody's, nobody's all green. Cool. Okay, uh, other questions? Comments? Opinions? I have a better answer for your DNS. Go for it. I have a better answer for your DNS question, like why it was made that way. So it's hierarchical, right? So back when, in the 80s, when they created all this stuff, the servers were not, they couldn't just have a, a, a giant rack full of servers that responded to one IP address that answered uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands uh, or millions of requests a second. So it was designed to be hierarchical, so you work your way up the chain. If, if, if your ISP doesn't know the answer, then they, or if your local node doesn't know the answer, it goes to the ISP, and it, if it doesn't know the answer, it goes to the next level, and then eventually it makes its way back up to the root server. But back, back in the day, you didn't just ask the root server every time. I mean, you still don't ask the root server every time. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure that answer But it was designed to be ISP. hierarchical, so that's why the IS ISP runs a DNS. But anyone can run it if it's hierarchical. I could run it on my own personal server and just let you all know. Uh, like, the ISPs didn't have to run it themselves. Somebody else could have run it, and when you go to DHCP with your ISP, they could send you to someone else. But I think we were done with that one. Um, I see a hand back over there again. VPN friend. Yeah, just taking one step back. Uh, I don't know, I think everybody here is pretty savvy, but um, just sharing my opinion about VPNs is they are so dicey because it's basically a man in the middle. So I think a lot of people rely, rely on them thinking, oh, I'm secure. No, you're sending all your data to somebody that could be very malicious and they, they just seem, so I use it very judiciously. And I think uh, encrypting your DNS and, and making sure you're using end-to-end -end encryption and just being very judicious and maybe setting up a PFSense uh, router or DDWRT, like you're saying, to add some additional security is way better approach than just lazily installing a, someone else's software. You know, that actually reminds me. Um, yeah. So this is a fits in with net neutrality, though, because uh, so what's that? Pretending we had net neutrality in this country, and hopefully we'll. If you're in California, who finally just passed its net neutrality <laughs> protections bill? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Get in back one state at a time. Uh, that's why I'm tired. Anyway. Um, so if you do, assuming we do have net neutrality, then what you're doing when you use a VPN is you're taking this internet traffic from going through just your ISP to also going through this server somewhere. And a server, a service running on a particular computer somewhere is not protected by net neutrality. So you're giving your information to a different party. You're taking this information away from your ISP who might have been bound by net neutrality and giving it over to someone else who's not going to be bound by net neutrality. So. It's, it is a trade-off that you're making then. Like you're, you don't want your ISP to have it, you don't want people on your local network to have it, and you want it to always be encrypted. But by giving it to a VPN, this VPN can do whatever they want with it, and you never know. So yeah, you're totally right. Gotta and be it's careful really not, with them. It's really not that hard, though, to like buy a $10 a month uh, DigitalOcean box and run uh, OpenVPN on it. So if you really want a VPN of your own that you can trust, that would be the way to go. Yeah, I, I love the, uh, the the amount of uh, mobile tools because you know, especially on iOS, there's it limits the number of things you can do. So to solve different problems, they're like, well, if you just go and set this up as a VPN, then I can go and, and modify stuff and do fix this problem that you you know you want to have as as and as a mobile app that I can easily do on Android, but I want it on on iOS. And yeah, I've, I've uninstalled numerous. VPN apps over the from my parents like all right, give me your phone. Let's see how many. All right, so this thing, and one of them was I think was originally uh, or um, I forget the problem that it was it was solving, but the the Facebook bought the, bought it and it was you know it was just one of those VPN. I think it was measuring your your bandwidth and can give you compression and it's supposed to feed up your speed up your connection and all that you know you know uh, make your make your phone run faster. And it was just a VPN and and just collecting all sorts of uh, bukus of information. And then yeah, Facebook bought it and didn't really put their label on it. Just just you know they started sucking up that data as well. So yeah, uh, probably people in this room you know spread the word that yeah 
uh, you know, VPN on, on mobile, it makes sure that you wanted to do it and that you're not just you know, using it to solve some other type of problem. So. Um, okay, more questions? Comments, concerns? Oh, yep, back at the front here. So the setting up your own VPN, do you run into issues with state laws like is, or yeah, laws dealing with um, um, storing your logs, stuff like that? Because I know mm -hmm. that's a big deal with VPNs. You don't want to, you don't want them storing the logs of where you've been and all that stuff. So do you run into, you know, if I'm in Georgia and I set up my own VPN, do I run into those issues? Do I have to I can't think, think of that? Are you kind talking of like GDPR sort of uh, storage issues? Well, no, I'm just talking about like if the government or the law, police or whatever, you know, they come in and say, hey, we want to know what your logs is, things that you store for where you. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're not required to keep anything along this line. Even if you were a business, even if you were a business, yeah, even if you're a business. Uh, but definitely on a personal level, there's yeah, there's no U.S. Um, Ooh, uh, I'm not sure that's quite right. Like I think the this is an open question why, that we're okay. So right, that's why there's two different, different things different, different here, states yeah. or different countries because they are they're not beholden yeah. to those. So if you're running it for yourself, it's one thing, right? Like you're just running your own personal VPN server right. and like your own logs, which are essentially the same logs as logs on your machine. That's a different story than if you're running it for other people. Okay. So it sounds like you're more talking about the latter case here. Well, I'm talking about for me. Okay. But then uh, it's like, okay, so it's limited to me, but then I can't give it to anyone so, else. So, okay, do we all remember the All Writs Act? No, we don't all remember the All Writs Act because we don't all spend all our time uh, following every possible legal thing. Um, so there was this thing in San Bernardino with an iPhone. You may have heard about the <laughs> government was trying to compel Apple to help to rewrite their software to make it so that the software worked differently so it would store the logs. And it got un it was left unresolved in the end. It's pretty clear that they were trying to create some case law. So that well, we think now, we think now that they were trying to create some case law to make it so that Apple would be forced to rewrite their software to store logs in a way that the government wanted them to, essentially, metaphorically, in this particular case. Store logs is the metaphor here. Right. Um, but it's still an open question of to what extent can the government compel a site to store particular logs. Um, so if you start off and you set up your Streisand instance to not have any logs, you're probably fine doing that until something happens, at which point I'll let, get you the number of one of the lawyers because I don't, I don't, I'm not a lawyer. Um, yeah, I'm not a lawyer, so this cannot be legal advice, and there's no uh, client uh, relationship. No legal right advice here. is offered, yeah, yeah. and no client. Okay. Yeah, that thing. That's the disclaimer right. over here. <laughs> um, and I am obviously not an expert in state laws, but if you set it up yourself, you're allowed to run your own software on your own server and do what it wants for now. Someone is I, I, th I think that the big the, the big caveat for that would apply to people is that if you uh, if you know that you're going to be sued, then you can't be destroying evidence that you know is going to be part of a legal. Right. So if you know that that's impending, you've been told that that, that suit is coming by you know lawyers are telling us to new stuff, then you can't destroy evidence uh, in that case. But uh, if I you want to set it up to never store the logs in the first place, th that's different. Right. You can totally do that. Signal. Uh, that's what that. Cloudflare is That's, doing. Cloudflare yeah. is only going to hold those records for 12 hours. So, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Why, why would I ever use a VPN that I create and not somewhere else? Uh, because it's on a server somewhere, and let's say you're on somebody else's network, you're at your friend's house, and you're on their Wi-Fi or something like. Oh, as opposed to like using one that exists already. Well, the thing I'm trying to protect against if I'm going on a VPN is so that they can't find out where I'm going, whoever they are. Oh, and then you're saying then they'll server, know. They'll know where I'm going. So if you're using a cloud property. service, it'll just look like it's coming from that particular cloud, right. and they won't yeah. know it's coming from your particular. So instance. why would I set one up in my in my on my in, in my your house? own house? Yeah. I have no yeah. idea why you'd set it. Yeah. You well, wouldn't do it in your own house. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. could set it up in your own house if you're more worried about your friend's network and you're over at their house and you want it to go through your ISP. That is a real edge case. 
or, yeah, or no, no. What happens is, 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 is I work in IT, and everybody wants to get around the proxies at IT, so they sit around and, and surf Facebook when that's blocked, mm -hmm. and so they set their own, uh, you know, uh, VPNs at home just to get around work-based. Uh, I'm not telling or hotels. Oh yeah. But I mean, one. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. There is some use cases for doing it at your own house, but the, the point is, is that DigitalOcean, you know, AWS, those are so cheap that it doesn't make sense anymore to, to do that. Yeah, you okay. can uh, do that in the cloud much easier, much safer. Yeah, I've had Wi-Fi hotspots that block certain kinds of traffic, and uh, so I have my own yeah. VPN set up on my server, which is conveniently at port 443, so nobody blocks it. It's so nice. Oh, you can, okay. So, if you're on one of the, oh, I should be saying, I'm going to say it, whatever, fun story. <laughs> if you're on one of those things that like blocks some type of traffic and not others, they'll tend to not block DNS queries. So, if you want to get onto the internet, even though they're not actually letting you onto the internet, to get to the captive portal page in the first place, you had to go through DNS. So, if you set it up and pretend it's a DNS service, but you're actually tunneling all your traffic through DNS, just saying it's possible. Yes, it's been done. That's your hey, preview the, uh, for uh, hacking to a one time. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the, done. Uh, Come back at 10 o'clock, we'll talk about it. With okay. the net neutrality law that just passed in California, is that going to actually kind of bleed over to the rest of the states? Because if Amazon's selling to someone in California, mm -hmm. that means they have to write new protocols that fit their new net neutrality. Does that kind of mean that they're kind of protecting the whole country in some ways because of the law that you have to, so, you have to do it in yeah. California, so it's going to actually affect us in the same way? Uh, it'll certainly make it an easier sell for other states, and it's a model, it's a bill, like the language of the bill is something that the other states can model it on, uh, and it might encourage the companies to act in a particular way, but it's not going to require companies to act in a particular way in every state, which is our ultimate goal. Is that even passed, as in signed? It's very likely the governor will sign it, Okay. But as he signed it. It passed the Senate and the Assembly. I guess I'm counting chickens before the eggs are born or whatever. <laughs> um, Be, being, being a politician, who knows what he'll good, do. Okay, fair point. I guess I got a little overexcited. It passed in the state Senate and the state Assembly, which were the two major hurdles, and our governor isn't entirely evil, so hopefully it will pass the rest. We've got two minutes. I saw a whole bunch of hands go up like three minutes ago. Did you all say what you wanted to say? Or did someone else say it? Okay, in the back, in the back of the back. I just want to tell you guys that y'all are awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Wow. We like you too. Thank you. Please rate this panel highly. That's all we need to worry about. Okay, one last question. One last question. I think I saw a hand at the front here. A real here. question. Yeah. A real question. Or, that's, that's, okay, that's, comments that's, are fine that's, too. That's another one of those. That's Discussions. Fun. Those are good. Fun stories. Um, um, I want to know... With all of this work that you're doing, does this also apply to IPv6 when it becomes anything more than a novelty? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, this this has no uh, you know no uh, no uh, impact on IPv6. I, IPv6 has not been a novelty for at least a couple of years because I think the uh, T-Mobile actually uses IPv6. No, pretty much all phones. All use phones IPv6. do yeah. because they can't have enough IP addresses for that. And so. and FYI, just is a funny story. I uh, used an open DNS on my router, everything's looking good, and then I notice my kid's looking at a website that I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be blocked. And I go and look, and that s my system was using an IPv6 DNS, and I'm like, excuse me, I did not set this up. And, and at some point, my ISP decided to issue an uh, a a IPv6 DNS address to my router which my router said, I like that better than six is more than four. So there we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand out this IPv6 and completely overrode my manual setting. It's too better. It's too better. It is. And so, uh, so yeah. So if, if you do set up your own routers, I mean, just double check and, and make sure that you're, you've got both IPv6 and IPv4 settings covered. So yeah. uh, do we have time for one more? Uh, we don't technically have time. But if you could say it in 10 seconds or less. 10 seconds. All right. I was just going to mention that a lot of ISPs have been quietly ro rolling out IPv6 to, uh, um, yep. to to the consumers. So, and I know Charter was one of them as right before I left Charter. It was all his and, fault. Oh. <laughs> cool. And other okay. ISPs I want to too. thank you all for coming today. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all.